What makes Stardew Valley such a good game? This video took surprisingly longer than I expected, there were a lot of good points raised by quite a few people, and after spending some time sifting through them and my own views on the game, these are the conclusions I have reached, and I hope you enjoy. 1. It's a healthy form of escape. One of the main reasons cited is that the game is peaceful and serene while having just enough difficulty to keep it interesting and for those who need to satisfy their violent urges, they are always the minds. The game is also more relatable to some of its more avid players, from my personal observations. The whole game starts on the premise of your character's grandpa giving you a sealed envelope, only to be opened when you feel burdened by the weight of modern life. When we fast forward a few years, we see that our character is working in the offices of Jojo Mart in an almost dystopian workplace. There used to even be a skeleton at the end of the cubicles, but this was removed for some reason. We cut to a scene where you have finally had enough, and you open the sealed envelope to find you have inherited a farm located in Stardew Valley, in the game's south coast. In the next scene, we have caught a bus and are headed to Pelican Town. The scene is very different from the previous one. We are driving through green forested mountains, under a vivid blue sky, and birds can be heard chirping in the trees. The colours are full of life and have a joyous quality to them. From the moment we get out of the bus, the game welcomes us with the happy and upbeat spring music. The local carpenter Robin greets us and we are introduced to the mayor at our farmhouse. Over the next few in-game days, we start getting acquainted with the game. We start meeting the different townspeople, figuring out how to forage, farm, fish and mine, and start to get into the game's rhythm. 2. Pacing and Gameplay Speaking of its rhythm, one of the most ingenious aspects of Stardew Valley's gameplay is how the player needs to save their game. To do so, they must go to bed and wake up the next morning. But so many players just cannot help playing a little longer. Oh, my crops are ready for harvest, I would just like to clear that up before I log off. But to save whatever progress they have just made, they need to go to bed again, and the next morning it's some other reason to keep playing. Another great thing is how you advance in the game. Each level you get in a specific skill, you unlock new crafting recipes, new items and animals, and in the case of fishing, it gets a lot easier with each level, as your fishing bar gets larger. The mines also have the elevator system, saving you the effort of having to fight and dig your way to the bottom every single time. You have the sprinkler systems, the Junimo hut, and the cute little Junimos will collect your crops for you which you can get once you've completed the community center and completed the goblin problem quest for the wizard, the auto grabbers which you can purchase from Marnie's once you reach level 10 farming and that automatically collects your animal products for you, there's even the auto petter which as its name suggests pets your animals for you and this increases the quality of the goods you harvest from them and you can buy it from Jojo Mart or get it from the Skull Caverns from one of the treasure chests. All of this automation frees up huge amounts of time slaving and grinding away at your farm to focus on other things you love about the game, such as mining, fishing, or getting to know the game's characters. Speaking of which... 3. Stardew Valley's Characters The characters of Stardew Valley are one of the most loved aspects of the game. Although the game has a cheerful, happy, and upbeat quality and style to its music and aesthetics, we learn that the characters are not one-dimensional. In fact, Stardew Valley does not shy away to touch some sensitive subjects. The story of Shane is a good example. When first interacting with him, he comes across as rude and dismissive of your attempts to talk to him. However, as we start to get closer to him, we start to see a person suffering from exhaustion, feelings of meaninglessness, alcoholism, depression, and even a lack of desire to live. He is a complex character whose behaviour is at first misunderstood. In one of our heart events with him, he asks us why he shouldn't roll off the edge of the cliff he is lying on. Regardless of our response, he asks us to go to the hospital, and in the next scene Harvey tells us his stomach has been pumped and he has been rehydrated. He is worried about Shane's mental health, and recommends he sees a counsellor he knows in Zuzu City. The next morning Shane comes to our house and apologises for his actions the day before, and thanks us for our help. He lets us know he is going for therapy and will take his life seriously from now on. In the following heart events of Shane, he has cut out alcohol from his life and can even afford to buy Jas, his niece, an expensive pair of shoes. Then there is Abigail, 
whose desire to be free and independent a lot of players find relatable. Including her love of video games, music, and adventuring, there's a reason she is one of the most popular bachelorettes. There is a scene where she stands up to her father about not wanting to be restricted to a domestic lifestyle just because she's a woman, honestly applaud queen, <laughs> and generally is a fun character to interact with. One of my personal favourites though is Emily. Although she is a bit weird, she is probably one of the sweeter characters within the game, who within her heart of hearts wants to bring out the best in people. We get to see this in her heart event, Clothing Therapy, where she tries to bring out the more authentic sides of the townspeople. I thought this was quite a sweet and cool heart event. We get to see some of the townspeople experiment with different looks. Shane chooses to go for a goth look, Robin decides to wear a green dress with her hair loose, the mayor in line of his character chooses to wear a top hat and cane, Abigail wears a full suit of armour, makes sense, and even Clint gives it a bash, but later backtracks. I think this whole scene really demonstrates what makes her a good character. Even Sam, who at first appears to be a bit of a himbo, <laughs> also has a bit more to his story. He tries to act as a father figure to his younger brother Vincent, while their father is away at war for the first year of the game. We see this in our heart event with him at the beach. And there is so much more. You cannot help but feel fascinated with the characters and their stories, and for me this was one of the most appealing and beautiful parts of the game. 4. The Community And of course, there is the online community of people who love Stardew Valley. The forum posters, the content creators, all of them make the experience of the game infinitely more enjoyable. Heck, I found out about Stardew Valley by watching people play it on YouTube, and I really liked what I saw. Also, the online community for Stardew Valley is just so wholesome. Even the creator, Concerned Ape, is very kind and helpful, until this day still assists and responds to people with any issues they may be having with the game on various platforms. And yes, maybe this all sounds a bit corny and cheesy, both of these things um, taste great together by the way, <laughs> but the Stardew Valley community is also one of the most inclusive and creative I have come across, and I think that does mean something. And when you take all of these different things together, it, the fact that it's a healthy form of escape, it's got good pacing and gameplay, characters are interesting and dynamic, and of course the wonderful online community, you really get a very unique game that I think is just so awesome, and it's just a wonderful thing that we should all cherish and enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Until next time!